Hello everyone, welcome to my seminar on good nutrition for healthy aging. I'm Dee Dee, I'm a registered dietitian and I would like to say a huge thank you to the Wexford Library Council and Healthy Ireland for inviting me here today and thank you all for joining me as well. So who am I? I'm Dee Dee, as I mentioned already, my long Dutch name is Dee Birke de Zwarte, and I'm a registered dietitian. I work in a large Dublin hospital part-time and I also work for the HSE communications department. So I have experience working in large Dublin hospitals, in hospitals around the country, and also in, um, for example, large rehabilitation hospitals, and then some smaller community hospitals as well as nursing homes. So I have a wide range of experience. Um, and for about four of my six years of experience, I worked in what we call care for the elderly or medicine for the elderly. And um, so this is looking after people who are often over 65, sometimes over 70 or 80, whatever the cutoff criteria are for that hospital. And so I have lots of experience working with medical teams, with physios, occupational therapists and speech and language therapists in all these departments as well. So in today's seminar, what I will do is give you, first of all, a background to the topic of nutrition in aging in Ireland specifically. I will then look at the question, should I eat any differently if I get older? This is a question I get asked quite often. People of course want to age well and want to be healthy as they get older. So we'll look into that topic. Then I will look at the key aspects of nutrition um, to focus on as we get older. And I will give you three key tips for each of those key nutrition points. And then I will do a quick fire round of Q and A's of the most commonly asked questions I get asked. And then of course, I will summarize all my key points again at the end of our session today. Now, I do want to give a quick trigger warning. Um, I will be talking about nutrition. I will be talking about health and disease. And if any of these topics are uncomfortable for you, um, you're welcome to leave the room or just fast forward a little bit until a point where you maybe feel more comfortable to listen again. There's no hard feelings there at all. You're very welcome to do whatever is comfortable for you. So. I'd like you to have a little moment for yourself first. You can pause me in a few minutes now if you want. Um, but I'd like to, you to think about what words come to mind when you think about good nutrition for healthy aging. A lot of people, for example, come up with words like vitamin D. I you know it's a big buzzword this past year. Um, and yes, vitamin D is an important part of healthy aging. What other words are coming to your mind at the moment? Some people might say staying active or mobility or good joint health. Some people are maybe thinking about heart health as well as they get older. Maybe they have had their bloods checked and have a high cholesterol level and want to manage that for healthy aging. And then there's, off, there's also the emotional aspect of aging when it comes to eating. Um, some people may have seen an elderly relative who maybe didn't eat very well or had a poor appetite. Um, and how do we manage even the, the enjoyment of food when we're told to eat really, really healthily um, by you know, the mass media and all the newspapers. But what does that even look like in real life? Can we still enjoy some of those foods like chocolate cake or any of the other enjoyable treat foods? And then simply even the concept of maybe retirement, having more time to cook, having more time to bake. Some of these things are also coming to mind perhaps when we think about aging and retirement and eating. Um, having more time to grocery shop, to plan your meals, um, and also to enjoy meals out with friends again now that the, supermar uh, the, the restaurants have opened. So whatever words are coming to mind right now, keep them in the back of your head. And I hope to answer any of those you know, questions you may have, or maybe even touch on some of the words that you've written down or thought of there um, over the course of this presentation. So now looking at that all important question, should I eat differently as I get older? There's a lot of research being done actually in this area in Ireland and um, UCD is leading the way on nutrition and ageing and realistically what they're finding in some of their research now is that yes, we do need to eat slightly differently as we get older. And this is because our diet can affect many different aspects of ageing from our joint health to our bone health but also things like our muscle strength, which then affects our mobility, our strength in general, and also our ability to prevent and recover from illness. Now, a lot of the changes that we do recommend um, when it comes to eating for healthy aging are not rocket science. They're pretty much in line with healthy eating for the rest of the population. Um, other than, for example, for vitamin D, but again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but there are a few things such as protein requirements that do change quite significantly as we get older. And we will be focusing on more on those as well later in the presentation. 
So here are some of the key points that I will be discussing in today's presentation. We will be talking about protein, fiber, vitamin D, omega-3 fats. We'll be talking about maintaining a healthy weight and also looking at alcohol consumption. So as I mentioned already, that UCD research it really delves down into our protein requirements specifically to maintain healthy uh, muscle function, which is important, as I mentioned as well, for mobility and for our ability to prevent and recover from disease. Now, interestingly enough, what we have found is that our protein needs go up as we get older. I know when we think of the word protein, we often think of bodybuilders with their protein shakes, um, but really actually it's the older people that need more protein than the younger people. Um, for some people it almost doubles how much protein we need. Now, thankfully most of us do meet our protein requirements anyway, the young and the old, but sometimes if our appetite is down or we might not be really focusing on getting enough protein in, and that's when we might want to start focusing a little bit on increasing our protein intake. Now, just for reference here, we find protein in foods like our meat, our fish, our dairy foods, and things like our poultry as well, our eggs, and then also in some plant foods like our beans and lentils and things like tofu and all those new vegetarian foods such as our corn as well. Now, another interesting point that UCD research has shown is that the timing at which we eat protein is important. So for example, we know in Ireland our usual diet has a good bit of protein, for example, in our lunches and in our dinners. So we might have, you know, some chicken on our sandwich for lunch and then have a steak for dinner. But the breakfast is often the time when we're not having as much protein. And really what the research is showing is that we should be spreading out our protein intake over the day as evenly as possible. So this really in the Irish context means we should be having more protein with our breakfast. Can you think of any protein foods that you might like to have for breakfast? Some people might consider having something like um, an extra yogurt with their breakfast or maybe putting an egg on their toast instead of just having butter toast. For some, it's as simple as just having even a glass of milk with their breakfast as well, just or a milky coffee, and any way to bring up the protein requirements or it needs in the morning time. So what are our top three ways to include more protein in our day? So as I said already, find a way to bring protein into your breakfast time. So have that egg with breakfast, maybe even beans on toast. Again, a lovely traditional one, but we often forget about that one for breakfast. Then also consider snacking on protein foods. So this could be things like your crackers and cheese, or even a milky pudding, like a yogurt or rice pudding, or even custard, depending on your appetite and your tastes. But again, finding ways to bring more protein in through snacks is a quick one and a great one if your appetite isn't very good either. Um, and then the last one is to consider using higher protein products as well. Now, again, these are very much advertised to the rugby lads and the gym heads among us, but Really, I have been starting to promote them as well for my older patients and clients. And um, so things like your higher protein milk, your higher protein yogurts. Again, if you find that your appetite isn't very big at breakfast time, consider maybe having your higher protein milk on your cereal or having a higher protein yogurt with your muesli. Again, these are nice ways to build in a little bit of extra protein without really having to add more volume into your food of just drinking an extra glass of milk. Now, I'm conscious there's a price tag to these products. Um, if you want to make your own high protein milk, for example, consider adding some skim milk powder to a pint of milk, and then you can use that as your own very, like your homemade protein milk um, throughout the day. Now, our next key nutrient is fiber. And yes, fiber is very important for maintaining a healthy gut. Um, higher fiber diets are linked to, for example, lower risks of colon cancer. Um, but also there's a strong link to higher fiber diets and a reduced risk for things like diabetes, heart disease and stroke. So it's not just the gut, but yes, definitely eating enough fiber helps us to maintain a healthy bowel motion as well. So constipation is something that people do find happening to them as they get older. And so maintaining an adequate fiber intake is something that can help us to manage and keep our bowels more regular. Now, Another thing of fiber is that it really helps us to feel full and satisfied after a meal. So for example, having some extra veggies which are high in fiber with your dinner can help you feel more satisfied and full after it. Or even just switching from like a white bread to a brown bread, all your brown products, like brown pasta, brown rice, brown bread, 
all of those are more filling and more satisfying. And this is because fiber almost acts like a little sponge. You know the Weetabix in the bowl and then you pour your milk on top, it just swells up nice and big, doesn't it? Well, that happens with any fiber in our stomach as well. If we eat higher fiber foods and then we drink a little bit of water or whatever fluids with it, it starts swelling up and actually your stomach then just feels more full. And this is very helpful for a lot of people who are interested in maybe reducing their portion sizes or losing some weight. Um, so yeah, consider increasing your fiber intake if you are interested in losing some weight as well. So what are my top three tips for increasing fiber intake? Well, first of all, consider having a higher fiber breakfast. Now, typically we would think about the breakfast cereals, right? Things like your Weetabix, your Shreddies, your shredded wheat, porridge even, all of these are really good sources of fiber. If you're more though into your toast or your bread, consider swapping to the higher fiber breads, like your whole grain bread, and maybe even popping a few beans on it. Again, more fiber from your beans there. Now, vegetables are a very good way of increasing our fiber intake as well. Now, if you imagine your ideal plate, okay, so you've got your plate. We normally would recommend for half of that plate to be covered in colorful things, such as your fruits, vegetables, and your salad vegetables. Um, so if you manage to already fill half your plate with color, so fruit, veg, salads, and then have a quarter of your plate covered in whole grain carbs, things like your brown pasta, brown rice, or a slice of brown bread, potatoes with the skin on them, lovely this time of year anyway with all the new potatoes around. And then we want the last quarter of our plate to be covered in lean protein foods, things like your meat, poultry, fish, otherwise go for beans or lentils or your, your vegetarian protein foods there. Now, having that half a plate of veg, again, guarantees you will get plenty of fiber into your meal. And then my last tip for getting more fiber into our day would be to snack on higher fiber foods like your fruits, your vegetables, and your nuts. And so for example, consider having some fruit and a yogurt. Again, we're getting that bit of protein in there as well. Maybe some vegetable sticks and hummus. Or what about even trail mix? Again, you're combining your bit of dried fruit there and some nuts for a really good boost of fiber. So then our next nutrient to consider as we get older is vitamin D. I know that was probably at the top of our minds going into this talk. And um, because yes, vitamin D becomes a bit more important. And we probably have heard the whole concept of vitamin D linked to bone health. Um, now with vitamin D, our best source is the sun, but we don't get a lot of that. I know we just had a nice heat wave earlier this year, but we don't really get enough sunshine. And we would say any month with the letter R in it, is a month that we probably don't get enough vitamin D from the sun. So anytime between September and April is when we need to be a bit more worried about getting enough vitamin D. And then another thing as we get older is that our skin is less able to produce vitamin D with the same sun exposure as when our skin was younger. Um, and so all of this together then puts older people more at risk of vitamin D deficiency as people who are younger. And so all of this together means that older people are more at risk of vitamin D deficiency. Now, vitamin D is important for things like our bone strength and for our joint health as well. But we now also have found links between vitamin D and our muscle strength and muscle size and immune system, which is the big one and the reason why we started recommending supplementation for everyone in Ireland this year. So what are our top ways of including more vitamin D in our diet? First of all, we do recommend a vitamin D supplement, and this is a supplement of 15 micrograms of vitamin D. You will be able to find this in most of your supermarkets and your pharmacies at this stage as well. And we recommend this once a day, especially in the winter months, so between your September and April, um, but if you can, even taking it throughout the summer months as well. Now, another way to get some vitamin D would be through fortified foods. And um, this would be things like your super milk or some of the um, butters or spreads are fortified with vitamin D, as are some juices such as orange juice, but they do have to have it labeled that they are fortified with vitamin D. And then a good source of vitamin D naturally in our diet would be oily fish. And um, so these would things think, be things like your salmon, your mackerel, your herring, your trout. Eggs do contain some vitamin D as well. I know some, farmer that I met while I was in college because he was doing some research of adding extra vitamin D into the feed of his chickens, which then would make his eggs higher in vitamin D. Not sure what happened to those eggs, but we know in general, eggs are a good source of vitamin D as well. But even if you do take your fortified foods and include some oily fish and eggs in your diet regularly, we probably still won't be getting the right amount of vitamin D, the adequate amount of vitamin D. So 
do still continue taking a vitamin D supplement as well. Now, talking about oily fish, about vitamin D earlier, I am now going to talk about omega-3 fats because these are very important fats as well as we get older. And um, we find omega-3 fats mainly in oily fish. Again, things like your salmon, mackerel, tuna, trout, herring, sardines, all of them are good sources of omega-3. And omega-3 has been linked to a good joint health and heart health. But now recently, there's also more research being done into the role of omega-3 fats and cognitive fun function. And it has found a beneficial effect on our cognition as we get older. Now, we know again from research that the Irish diet is often lacking in enough vitamin, uh, in enough omega-3 fats. And so it is important to try at least to include at least one portion of oily fish a week. Now, if you really cannot take oily fish at all, if you just don't like it, or you have dietary choices that prevent you from having oily fish, then you would need to take an omega-3 supplement. And we would say 1000 milligrams of fish oil is sufficient a day. And this would be one gram of fish oil. Now you may have some nice fresh sources of oily fish, things like your salmon darns, or you could go for a lovely bit of trout or mackerel. But then also we have our canned options, such as canned sardines, canned herring, um, canned kippers, so that's your herring, I think. Um, but just be cautious that fresh tuna counts as omega-3 source, but then the canned tuna does not. And this is because the, the canning process with tuna takes away most of the healthy um, omega-3 fats in the process of it. So next, another important nutrient to consider as we get older is alcohol, because research does show again that alcohol intake increases slightly as we move into retirement. Now there are strong links found between a higher alcohol intake and an increased risk of cognitive decline. And this would be things like your, your dementia. Now a higher alcohol intake is also linked to um, an increased risk of heart disease and to lower moods as well. So an interesting fact is that the biggest binge drinkers in Ireland are actually the over 50s. It's not the kids in the fields, it's actually the adults sitting there with their glasses of wine. And um, I'll talk a little bit more in a minute about what a binge drink is. So we would consider a binge drinking episode as an episode where you have more than six standard drinks in one sitting. But what is the standard drink, Dee Dee? Well, a standard drink would be a small glass of wine, 100 mils, definitely not the ones we're serving ourselves or are being served in restaurants these days. And um, it would be half a pint of things like your lagers or ciders, and then it would be a pub measure of spirits. So again, doing the maths, if you have three pints in one night, that may be considered a binge drink. Um, and we really would advise to avoid ever having one of those moments where you do end up in a binge drinking episode because this is where we find the biggest risk to our health. Now, safe upper limits of drinking for Irish adults is set at 17 standard drinks a week for men and 11 standard drinks for women. And we would recommend to have at least two alcohol free days a week as well. And next, I will talk about our last key point to consider as we get older, and this would be to maintain a healthy weight. Um, now, interestingly enough, as we get older, a healthy weight actually means being in the healthy BMI range, but also being in the overweight BMI range. That's kind of your sweet spot, being both healthy or slightly overweight. The risk to our health is found when we start moving into either the underweight category or into the obese category. So realistically, it's a good idea to check your weight regularly, perhaps get your height checked as well in a pharmacy or with your GP, and then know what your BMI is. But I would say perhaps checking your weight once a month or once a week, pick a day of the month or pick a day of the week that works for you. Maybe keep a little diary or keep tabs of it on your phone, but see what the overall pattern is of your weight. I'm not worried about half a pound up or half a pound down day to day. I really would like to know more, or your dietitian would like to know more about the trend. If your weight is trending up and you're worried that maybe you are at risk of obese, consider talking to someone about that. But also if your weight is trending down unexpectedly, this is the unexpected weight loss. That's something else that we tend to get worried about um, because then you're more at risk of losing muscle as well as fat. But definitely that muscle is what we're trying to hold on to as we move into the older ages. So what are my top three tips for maintaining a healthy weight? My first tip would be to stay active. We know that physical activity is great for helping us to boost our mood and lift our spirits. It's also good for helping us to maintain a healthy weight. Um, also, again, it builds that all important muscle, which is both important for people who are trying to lose weight, but also people who are at risk of losing too much weight from any condition 
for example. Another big way to help us maintain a healthy weight if we are at risk of obesity is to eat plenty of veg. Remember again my plate model, half a plate of veg, salads or fruit is a good way to reduce the amount of calories we eat in our day and it boosts the amount of fibre we're eating and all gets us all the healthy vitamins, minerals and antioxidants as well. Now my last tip is to snack smart and what does that mean? It means that we can stop kidding ourselves that we don't need to snack at all. Um, I know my tummy rumbles at 11 a.m. every morning and if I pretended that that wasn't happening I'd probably find myself going for the vending machine in work. So I know I'm going to be hungry at 11 and I'm planning to snack smart by bringing a snack with me. I like to combine for example a higher protein food with a fruit or a vegetable or salad veg. For example, I might have some carrot sticks and hummus with me, maybe some yogurt again or a piece of fruit. Again, that protein food and the fruit veg or salad veg is really helpful for that. So that's what Snacking Smart is. It's about nourishing ourselves with food um, instead of seeing snacks as the, the demon that it actually shouldn't be because it is a really good opportunity for us to get nutrition in as well. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, there are people who are worried about losing weight without trying to. There might be some condition in the background or maybe their appetite just isn't what it used to be. And so I have three tips for people who are worried about losing weight without trying as well. Um, the first step would be to eat little and often. This means having three meals in the day, but also three small snacks. So don't worry about having that big roast for dinner. Maybe consider having a good breakfast, as big a portion as you can manage, but then always planning a snack mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and then having a little supper snack as well. And then my next tip would be to choose foods that are higher in energy and protein. If you are worried about losing weight without trying to, or you're trying to maintain your weight desperately and it's fine, you're finding this difficult because of a poor appetite, if you fo choose foods that are naturally higher in calories and higher in protein, this can help you to eat more calories in a smaller portion. So these tend to be not the healthiest foods, but think of your foods high in fat and sugar, like your biscuits, your sweets, um, your pastries, um, and milky puddings again, they're trifles, custards, and um, all of these foods are higher in protein and higher in energy and give you more bang for your buck. So more calories in a smaller portion. Then my last tip would be to consider food fortification as well. What this means is that you are adding extra things into your meal, again, to increase the amount of calories and protein in that small portion. This could be, for example, adding some butter onto your potatoes, again, extra fat, higher in calories, maybe choosing to add some skim milk powder to a soup, maybe some cream as well to that soup, maybe grating some cheese onto an omelette. Again, all of these are good ways to add more calories and protein into a smaller portion. So those were my six key points when it comes to looking at good nutrition for healthy aging. Now we're going to move on to my quick fire question and answer round. These are some of the top questions that I get asked whenever I do present to people about healthy aging. So the first question is, should I take any multivitamin supplements? Now, apart from your vitamin D, which is again the 15 micrograms of vitamin D for people, but preferably in the winter months, but maybe all year round at the moment, um, we also might recommend that one gram of fish oil if you don't eat oily fish. Now for women of childbearing age, we do also recommend 400 micrograms of folic acid. But outside of those key nutrients, we would not recommend as a standard for everyone to take a multivitamin supplement. Um, our diet normally does provide us with everything it needs as long as we do find a nice variety of different foods. Eating the rainbow for fruit and veg and having some carbs and some protein foods every day will help you to get enough of all your other nutrients. Now, if you are worried about your diet, it may help to speak to a dietitian or your doctor to see if any other vitamins or minerals are required. For example, your doctor may start you on calcium supplements or your dietitian might recommend, for example, a certain B supplement um, if there is any risk there of deficiencies. I often see multivitamins as the sprinkle on the cake, right? If that cake, so your general diet, is lovely and balanced and nutritious and full of good tasting food, then you don't really need the sprinkles. They're kind of an excess there. So make sure that that cake or your general healthy balanced diet is balanced and full of goodness, and then you probably don't need the multivitamins on top of it. So the next question I get asked regularly is, are diets such as the intermittent fasting diet or the keto diet any help? Now, when it comes to weight loss, really it's down to as simple as cutting some calories and increasing our calorie expenditure. So exercising a little more and eating a little less when it comes to energy or calories. 
Um, so a lot of the time people do find that a diet such as a fasting diet or a keto diet where there's really strict rules can actually help them to say, okay, well, I can't have that, I can't have that. And so they're naturally going to have less cake, less chocolate, less of the higher fat foods. Um, and so they lose weight. So yes, they do work, but there's easier and even safer ways to lose weight as well. So as I said, for example, that my plate model, half a plate of veg, fruit or a salad veg, quarter plate of healthy whole grain carbs and a quarter plate of lean protein. That's a plate that's designed as well to help us with weight loss. In general, eating plenty of those colorful fruit, veg and salads is on its own linked to healthy weights as well and weight loss. So there is other ways to lose weight other than these very drastic diets. And just a word of caution with some of these diets, there's that risk as well of things like um, nutritional deficiencies. Um, so I would just put out a word of caution if you are interested in trying a fad diet or a diet that you have heard in the media or your friend swears by it, perhaps consider speaking to a dietitian and asking those questions to someone who knows whether this is a diet that is, for example, safe for you and based on your, your medical history and your circumstances and whether this is even the best choice for you to achieve your goals. So another question I get asked regularly is, should I eat any differently if I play a lot of sports or I'm very active? Um, and realistically, we probably don't need to eat very differently. Most of us are eating enough energy in the day to help us fuel our bodies correctly to be active. Now, some people who do play very long standing sports, like going for very long cycles or very long runs, they may benefit from eating slightly differently and it may help to speak to a dietitian about that. Um, however, for most of us, maybe making sure we have good meals, including some carbohydrates before and after exercise and including enough protein as well before and after exercise can help us to fuel our bodies correctly. But there's probably no need to eat more or extra of things. And also we probably don't need to have any extra supplements or even protein shakes. We probably can get enough nutrition from our food alone. So then the next question is, should I give up sugar? This is a very commonly asked question. People see sugar as evil heard lots of bad stories about sugar, but sugar is simply just a carbohydrate. Um, it's a very easily absorbed carbohydrate. It has the capacity to increase our blood sugars very quickly if we have something like diabetes. Um, but sugar is also very enjoyable. And for the majority of us, there's no need to cut out sugar altogether. Yes, healthy eating involves reducing our sugar intake, but we cannot forget the important role that enjoyable foods like a bit of chocolate cake can have on our cultural life, on our social life, and on our own emotional well-being as well. So everything in moderation, right? Um, a little bit of a tasty food can definitely be part of a healthy balanced diet. And then the last question is, when should I see a dietitian? And this answer is really just very individual to yourself. Um, definitely see a dietitian if you are worried about your health when it comes to nutrition. So um, people with diabetes, people with heart disease, people um, who are losing weight without trying or maybe not eating enough for their energy and um, to maintain their weight. Um, if there's any worries about a condition that's related to nutrition, I would definitely see a dietitian. But then there's other people who are interested in the support of a dietitian to continue being healthy and potentially to help them with some weight loss or to help them with their relationship with food. Again, there's a lot of people out there who are experiencing very bad um, feelings around food. Maybe they have binge eating episodes or they are finding themselves in cycles of unhealthy diets. Um, and then a dietitian can be helpful to speak to because we also have a lot of experience in working with counseling um, and motivation as well. So. Really, the answer is very individual. See a dietitian for sure if there's any issues with your diet and your nutrition when it comes to your health. And consider seeing a dietitian as well if you want some support with any other dietary changes. So then as a summary of today's seminar, yes, our diet can influence our health as we age. We know that our protein needs increase. We need to continue having adequate fiber for healthy bowels, but also for a reduced risk of diabetes and heart disease. Vitamin D becomes extra important, not just for our bone health or our joint health, but also for things like our immune health and our muscles. Omega-3 fats, again, an important part of healthy aging for our brain health, as well as our heart health and our joint health. Then we need to look at our alcohol intake. We want to make sure we don't drink to excess, so minimizing our binge drinking and drinking within the healthy upper limits. 
Um, and lastly, we want to maintain a healthy weight. And this involves either we're um, not falling into the underweight, but also not into the obese category if we can. I suppose in our quick fire question and answer round, we did find that myths are plentiful when it comes to nutrition. So rather than falling for the next fad or the next nutrition myth, potentially do consider checking um, your facts with a dietitian before you fall into another fad diet. And lastly, I suppose dietitians in general are here as a good source of information about healthy nutrition in aging. So if you do want to speak to a dietitian yourself, and um, we are around, you might be able to find a dietitian through your GP. And otherwise the Irish Nutrition and Dietetic Institute also has a list of dietitians that may be available locally or online for you to see. So thank you so much for your time today watching this seminar. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions at all about the topic we discussed today or any other topic, um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's at ddtitian underscore rd. Or you can find me on my website, www.ddtitian.com as well, where you're welcome to send a little question through through my contact form. So yeah, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Hope you enjoyed our seminar and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye.